goes on this morning. But of course, what everyone is talking about is the tornado that touched down in Granbury. There were actually 10 different tornadoes reported in last night's storm, but this one has killed six people. There's still several people missing. Um, hundreds of people were injured. So six still unaccounted for. Yeah. So we are. That video. There's, wow. There's the the main funnel cloud that touched down and. I'll tell you something, tense, scary moments as people saw that touchdown, and then this morning as the sun rose and they were able to see the aftermath of it, it was just devastating. Uh, we do want to say good morning now to Officer Bell. He's the PIO for Hood County Sheriff's Department. Good morning, Officer Bell. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. What can you tell us as far as an update goes? Last we heard, there were Look six people that. killed. There were several people missing and hundreds injured. Our fatality numbers remains at six. Uh, we had 14 people listed as missing uh, last night. During the night, we've made contact with a group of five that was a family that had left before the storm. And then the search and rescue team uh, came across two persons that were in their home that did not evacuate. So now we believe the, we're down to the number of seven for missing. Mm. Uh, my, best, my best number of injuries that were treated that we know about are, is a 53, 54, somewhere in that neighborhood. So those that are missing, I'm, I'm guessing you're hoping they've just evacuated and they're not trapped under rubble somewhere. It, that's exactly what we're hoping for. The search and rescue team started at 3 o'clock this morning, and uh, they're going to be done around 9, between 9 and 10, I was told. So they'll and be, the, they'll be done going prepared. through all, they'll go through all the rubble by, by 9 well, or 10 o'clock this morning? Just, just in that one subdivision. Now, I don't know what other areas they're going to be involved in searching, but just in, in the primary, the main subdivision that received the most damage and injuries is where they're focusing right now. And it's my understanding they'll be done with their initial search around 10 o'clock. You know, we're hearing some, some good things about the first responders in this situation. Uh, what do you have to say to all the rest of the folks on in the Sheriff's Department there? Well, the, the Sheriff's Department here, I actually work for Richland Hills Police Department, and I'm a member of the North Texas PIO group, and we respond whenever there's an emergency like this. So I'm just, I'm just here helping out with Hood County. But the Sheriff had said, you know, there were so many people that responded from different agencies that they actually had to start turning help away last night, which is, that's just awesome. Do you know if there's anything right now in these early hours that, that the folks there need? Like if, if well, we wanted to help, is there something we can do? We're having a meeting at 10 o'clock this morning to get the donation process organized and coordinated. And as soon as we get that, that uh, fastened down, we'll release that information. Uh, we, don't, we don't want a, a bunch of stuff delivered that we're not gonna need or have a use for. So we just wanna get that coordinated. And also for the volunteers, for the for the groups and also for the individuals that want to volunteer we have a, a station set up for the, all the volunteers to register that way we can keep track of who's here and who's doing what and keep that in an orderly fashion as well okay and i do know we're going to try to talk with the folks at, at the red cross and see uh, what we can do to help with their efforts um real quickly yeah. officer bell before we let you go how much advance warning did the folks in granbury get before the tornado touched down do you know i, I know i saw I know I saw footage that someone filmed the tornado and you could hear the sirens going. And I believe I heard the sheriff say there was, I know he was on the, the radio with the National Weather Service. So there was an advance warning given. I, I, I can't tell you exactly how many minutes that was, but it was a, a, a pretty fair warning. Okay. Officer Tybell, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know we'll all be tuning in to uh, to hear what, what you all have to say this morning at 10 o'clock. but. Gosh, just devastation. And you know, the first thing that I thought when I saw some of the video from this morning, and uh, I was watching Channel 8 and they had their helicopter up, and it, you know, you, they tell you to get low when you when you think there's a tornado coming, get to the lowest point in your home. And boy, if, if that advice was not evident, that it's good advice, it, it was this morning when you saw their shots because the top of the homes just sheared off. And do you really want to be in that helicopter when they're shooting the video? I don't think so. That's yeah. not a good job to have well, on that Well, you know, day. and they had, when the storm was rolling in last night, they had some um, choppers up from far away taking shots of it. And I know that's very scary to be up there when there's... Now, you've you know, been a newscaster, right? Did yeah. you ever do any storm chasing? I, I never did. Um, I, I never got stuck with that. I did. That. Did you? I did. My first job was on the air in Lubbock. That's Tornado Alley. Yeah, we did it. We did it quite a lot. It was 
it was scary, but really exciting. Not a place you want to be too much. Though. Yeah, sometimes you know those breaking news stories. It is exciting being out there, but. Um, the storms are just so unpredictable. Um, as I said, we're, we're talking to the Red Cross this morning, too, because they are always just right in the thick of things, helping, and their help is immediate and um, much needed. So Anita Cross with the Red, uh, Anita with the Red Cross joins us now. Anita, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, we're doing, we're doing a lot better than the people that were helping this morning, I'll tell you that. They had a really terrible evening. Yeah, I can only imagine what what it was like this morning when the sun came up and everybody was starting to see really what what the devastation was. Were you there this morning? Then? So yeah, yeah, we came in. Uh, we came in and started setting up shelters in the overnight hours. We actually had uh, three shelters set up. We have one remaining. Had 42 people that needed to spend the night with the Red Cross last night. So that's pretty significant. Um, and then this morning, as soon as we got some daylight. You know, we got our first perimeter look at the area. Now, the first responders are still in securing everything, making sure that it's safe. But we do have a Red Cross uh, rehab team out that's providing uh, supplies like snacks and hydration for firefighters, first responders that are working the scene. The families, as soon as it's safe, will be able to, to go into the neighborhood and take their first look. Uh, but we're just not at that, not quite at that point yet. Anita, I think what's really great about what you and the team at Red Cross do is y'all have you really taken to the social media and let people know via Twitter, via Facebook, you know, what they can immediately do and, and ways that they can they can help, you know, because that's so instantaneous. What can people who maybe haven't gotten onto social media yet, what can they do right now with Red Cross? Is there is there a number we can text? Are there Absolutely. Oh, there it is on our screen right now. <laughs> oh, well, great. So people can always text to help the Red Cross. You just text the word Red Cross to 90999. That's a $10 donation. Um, people can also jump on our website at redcross.org uh, and make a donation there or just call us at 1 800 Red Cross. We've used a lot of supplies, a lot of resources already, uh, well before the sun ever came up. And that's what those dollars do for the Red Cross. So the money is out. actually more valuable than us donating actual product, correct? Yes. I mean, for the Red Cross, it is because we purchase all of our items in bulk. So we actually can, can really capitalize on your donated dollar and make it go a lot further. Uh, plus for shipping and transportation of items that have to come from warehouse to warehouse, um, those items need to be sorted and on pallets in the same size. That's what those dollars do for the Red Cross. It allows us to be incredibly efficient in getting a relief operation established. Anita, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Real quickly, are you setting up any sort of um, an area where people can get information about the, the folks that are still missing? So what we want you to do, if you have not been able to locate a loved one, two things, jump on our website at redcross.org, and you want to click on the safe and well feature. If someone has checked in at the Red Cross shelter here, which we're encouraging them to do, they'll be listed in safe and well, so you can find them on the list. The other thing, if you don't have internet access, is to call 1-800-RED-CROSS, and they can help you um, with Safe and Well, too. We know that often is the most difficult part of a disaster, is not being able to reach your loved ones. Uh, so keep trying them on the phones as you normally would, but jump onto our Safe and Well site, too, and see uh, if they're listed. Okay, Anita Foster with the Red Cross, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, they are always just doing such phenomenal work. And you got to figure they're tapped out because they've just been working in West and so many mm -hmm. other disasters that have been happening across our country lately. Yeah. So. You know, last night was so scary. I was actually um, at the W Hotel at an event up on the 33rd floor, and the sirens start going off. And there's horrible storms outside, but we're all yeah. just thinking, you know, we're it's we're just, just a storm. Yeah, it's yeah. just how it's just some rain. Um, and then the W Hotels, all their security team come up to the 33rd floor which if you've ever been there um, they're you know in uptown right by the American Airlines Center um, it's all glass and they're like there's a tornado warning we're not messing around everyone needs to go downstairs now they evacuated the whole hotel and sent everyone from the entire W hotel down into the underground parking structure where they held us for about 20 minutes 
and then it let us go. But I mean, you feel like, you know, herds of cattle. And I've never been in a situation like that where they're telling people, you need to evacuate, you need to evacuate. Like now, and we're all thinking, oh my gosh, is this for real? Or we, is there, but you know, now obviously seeing, um, you know, what had happened, you know, obviously in Grand Prairie or Granberry and um, Cleburne, you know, it's sad. So I, um, you know, it, it makes me happy at times like that, that there are people that are taking this seriously where, ever, you know, I've never, at a hotel, you don't think, oh, we'll be fine. Like, right. it's a big, strong building, but... Have you ever been in a tornado? You know, I have. I grew up in Fort Worth. Um, so you remember the yes, building Yes, near, downtown, near yeah. Benbrook. And, um, and so there were times that, you know, we would get in the bathroom and there'd be a mattress. And, um, you know, you hide in a room that, you know, is Climb very sound. Yep. Um, but, yeah, there, and then I went to school in Abilene where, you know, there was always bad weather. So, so it, as Texans, you, you guys are used to that. So but we're I kind of up, desensitized to it, I feel like. As Texans, we're like, ah, it'll be fine. Well, yeah, it's, it's the same. Fine. I grew up in Los Angeles, so it was always the earthquake drills is what we did. So oh, we knew okay. how to get ready for an earthquake. But I'll tell you, last summer, um, remember when the, the the storm rolled through and all the hail damage around yeah, White yeah, Rock? Yeah. And they thought tornadoes were going to touch down. And uh, I hit, the boys were a little freaked out. We were all a little freaked out because we really didn't know what to do. You know, we didn't when know if you've never experienced it, it's scary. Like there were friends in from like New York and, and West Coast and East Coast and Canada last night at the party. And they're all like, is this for real? Like, mm -hmm. do are tornadoes a thing here in Texas? I'm like, you need to take this seriously. Yeah, like we're not yeah. messing around. They're like, oh, OK. Oh, my God. You know, so it's interesting to hear people who don't live yeah. in Tornado Alley that are like, is this for real? You know, and we're yeah, putting this insane. up on the screen for you again. Um, it's so easy to donate money to Red Cross. And as you heard Anita say, it, it, they really need the money much more than they need, you know, clothes or food or, or your time. Um, so you can text Red Cross to 90999 and uh, that makes a $10 donation immediately. And also, if you are one who is looking for loved ones and you haven't heard from, from people, and we know that there are people still missing, uh, you can go to redcross.org, click on the safe and well feature, and uh, and hopefully the folks who, who are there and are okay have checked in and their names will be there. If you don't have internet access, you can also just call 1-800-RED-CROSS and ask them about the safety of the people you're concerned about. So and running the, uh, the shelters up on the screen mm -hmm. right now, that's a great idea because you're seeing Granberry, right? This program is seeing yeah. Granberry? Yeah. yeah.